and, and they'd also sample the rum at the very end of the trip to make sure that people, you know, on the boat didn't pick up some of this rum and, so and you know, exactly, salt, salt water or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what they found was at the very end of the trip, rather than it, uh, you know, it would taste so much better at the end of the trip because it would be at sea for months, right? Because, you know, that's how long it took for a sailboat to get all the way over from the Caribbean to here, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It would sit at the sea for months and just sit there waving back and forth inside that barrel. And what happens is, when it's, since it's moving around in that barrel, it actually ages a lot quicker and a lot better within the oak barrel because it sucks in that flavor from the, from the oak, right? That's what gives it that nice flavor. So we thought, well, how do we duplicate that? How do we make that our rum? So we thought, okay, we can't put it on the barge or in the water because leave it out there, anybody We'll just drive up their boat and teef the rum, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, and, uh, you know, plus we wanted to temperature control it because we have, have our special way of doing it. So what we decided is let's, let's put it under the water. It's perfect because it's isolated, it's nice temperature control, it's nice and cool down there, not too cool, not too warm, it's just right. And, um, yeah, it's great. And what we can do is allow the sea to do the work. So when, exactly. you say, so, so when you say you put it under water, we literally what, put it. You get crates and you dump them how far in the water? Yeah, so what we do is we get, we, go, we contact, um, we buy our barrels from Maker's Mark. We buy it from them, bring the product down. You know, just empty barrels that have been used already. And we use their, their barrels to age our rum. And that's why when you taste our rum, you get a nice, cool, smooth undertone of the bourbon inside there as well, which makes it beautiful, man. It just sipping rum it's beautiful stuff and we you know do a little special magic you know tickle and hug to the um, um barrel can't tell you any more than that that's what we're going to call it officially tickle and rub to the barrel <laughs> i still <don't laughs> sexual in the tone there anyway so we, <laughs> we 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 do something special to the barrel and we then take it bring it to a special secret spot right off the shore 42 feet and we sink it, and then we actually anchor it. So if you go to a spot underneath the sea in the Cayman Islands, what you'll find is an area full of these barrels just floating like this, with a chain attached and anchored to the bottom of the sea. And it sits there with the currents moving around, just massaging that rum inside there, and it sits there for two years. And then we take it out, and we do another little special something to it, and it's seven pounds. That's it. And we're the only ones in the world that do it this way. Nobody, the whole traditional process is, you know, you take the bottle or the barrel and you put it somewhere and, you know, you let it age for a while and the angels get their share and so on. You know, ours, angels don't get it, mermaids do. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, man. You missed out on him, man. Yeah, yeah, man. And sorry, what, what's your name again, sorry? Damien Dilbert. I'm, my brother is actually the one who makes the rum. My younger brother, Nelson. Okay. Yeah, check out our website, man. Go to rum.ky. That's it. And you'll find like all, they've got a wicked website. It tells you all about how the rum is made. It tells you everything about it, man. It's beautiful. You gotta check it out. All right. Thank you for your time. Yay, no worries, man. Thank you.